Hi, this is a lecture on pathology of the vulva and vagina. We will proceed with the non-neoplastic epithelial disorders in the vulva and the vagina. Um, these disorders may be benign, pre-malignant and malignant, but they all may present with the same kind of lesion, which is opaque, white, plate-like mucosal thickening, which are called leukoplakia by clinicians. There are also two types of lesions when their origin is unknown. First is lichen sclerosis, which will be explained in the next slide, and squamous cell hyperplasia or lichen simplex chronicus. Squamous cell hyperplasia happens when the patient keeps rubbing the skin to relieve the itchiness associated with the lesion. And histologically, you will see epithelial thickening, expansion of the stratum granulosum of the epithelium, and significant surface hyperkeratosis. Lichen sclerosis grossly presents as a smooth white plaque or papule that may extend or coalesce, and microscopically it will present as thinning of the epidermis, with the disappearance of the reed pegs, this is also called epidermal atrophy. Hydropic degeneration of basal cells, but you, it's difficult to see in this picture. Superficial hyperkeratosis, increased in the keratin here. And dermal fibrosis, with, with scant for perivascular mononuclear inflammatory cell infiltrate. If the entire vulva is affected, the labia will appear atrophic and stiffened, and this condition is most common in postmenopausal women. An important thing to know is it has an increased change of developing squamous cell carcinoma in their lifetime. Benign exovitic lesion includes condyloma acuminatum. Grossly, it will present as a varicose or warty appearance with raised exophytic appearance. Histologically, you will see a branching tree-like course of stroma covered by squamous epithelium. Like so, this, these are the stroma and it's surrounded by the epithelial cells. And it's covered by uh, with characteristic viral cytopathic changes or choreocytic atypia. So as marked by the arrow here are the choreocytic atypia, uh, which uh, is shown by the um, halo, perinuclear halo surrounding the nucleus. Condyloma acuminatum is caused by low oncogenic risk HPV, usually type 6 and 11, and therefore is not considered a precancerous lesion. Vulvar carcinoma develops from precancerous in situ lesion, and uh, it is also known as classic VIN. So classic VIN present as discrete white flesh colored of or pigmented lesion. Microscopically, it presents as nuclear atypia of squamous cells, lack of cellular maturation, and increased mitosis. And the majority of these lesions are positive for HPV-16, which is the high risk, high oncogenic risk HPV. It has the same risk factors as cervical intraepithelial neoplasia. VIN3 is also known as Bowen disease. It has uh, it it is also known as vulvar carcinoma in situ. Microscopically, it will present as full thickness atypia, as you'll see in the picture here, with loss of epithelial maturation. There's loss of basal cells, and you will see some lymphocytes and plasma cells infiltration in the dermis. Papillary hydradenoma presents as a sharply circumscribed nodule which tends to ulcerate. It is usually located at the, the labia majora and, or the interlabial folds. If you are familiar with best breast pathology, you will have come across a lesion known as intraductal papilloma. Papillary hydradenoma of the vulva and vagina is the same, has the same microscopic features as intraductal papilloma of the breast. So histologically, the papillary projections are here and it's covered by two layers of cells. There, are, there will be top 
columnar secretory cells and underlying flattened myoepithelial cells. So the most important thing you have to know, you have to notice is the papillary projections. Extra memory paget disease presents as pruritic, red crusted, sharply demarcated map like area in the labia majora. So it can be mistaken as eczema at first. It may have a palpable submucosal thickening or nodule. So histologically, it will present with large tumor cells present in single distributions or um, in small clusters within the epidermis and its appendages and these cells are surrounded by halo uh, and this will be positive for PAS stain or pe periodic acid shift stain and uh, these malignant cells are confined to the epidermis and hair follicles unlike Paget disease of the nipple And uh, if you have learned about breast pathology, you will know that the Paget disease also exists in the breast, especially at the nipple. And extra memory Paget disease not only occurs in the vulva vagina area, but also in the ax axilla. Okay, malignant melanoma is rare and it's comprised of less than 5% of all vulvar cancers in women. The peak incidence is 6th to 7th decade, but it is important to know because it's capable of metastatic dissemination. It has a low survival, survival rate because probably there is delay in detection. And it also presents as large tumor cells lying in single distribution within the epidermis or in small clusters. But um, there are some differences with Paget's disease. It may contain melanin pigment for malignant melanoma, such as in this picture here, it shows melanin pigment. If you do immunohistochemical stain, it will be positive for S100. Cytokeratin stain will be negative because it's not an epithelial um, malignancy. Um, and PAS will be negative because the halo surrounding the tumor cells do not contain mucopolysaccharides unlike Paget disease. So in the next lecture, I will explain about cervical intraepithelial neoplasia and cervical carcinoma. Thank you.